Alright, hello, hello everyone, and welcome in to the stream today. Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. Um, today, what we are going to be talking about, so hello to everyone who's already popped in, so from what I can see, it's Sammy, Coral Likes to Draw, Xanthia, and I'm sorry, a name I can't pronounce, but hi. <laughs> um, welcome to the stream. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over blending. Now, blending has a lot of different blending. I was working on a D, D morale drawing right before this. Excellent. I was working, period. Or working on a digital painting right before this. Hello, Duder. Welcome in. Um, me too. I was working, <laughs> period. Um, but yes, glad to have everyone in. Um, today, we're going to be talking about blending. Now, blending is kind of a broad topic. Um, it's okay. I can't spell either. Blending is a pretty broad topic because there's so many different types of blending and what you and how you blend and sometimes people don't blend at all, right? So we're going to be going over a few different types of blending and a few different ways that you can blend. We're going to just end off with a fully blended character, um, just kind of the way that I blend. Um, so you can kind of see my own process for all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah. Before we get to that, though, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd, too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below, and check out our website for our class offerings, because we are not just a YouTube channel. We're an art school, too, so if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on our Patreon, where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files every other week critique sessions and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone so all right let me just check something real quick excellent hi it's me again hello wolf luna welcome in oh, i put that the wrong place there we go just organizing me windows okay Blending. Sorry if I get really loud at points. By the way, I read your comic last week, Jesse. So good. I'm in love with all the characters. Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm currently rewriting it a little bit, but I'm glad. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Poppy. Paula. Oh, no. Paul had. Hello, Poppy. <laughs> Welcome in. Um, Sorry, I can't read it. I did too. Yay. Thank you. Um, okay, blending. There's lots of different things when it comes to blending. Sometimes when people think of blending, right, they think of like, oh, it's super, super soft, blended, everything's perfect, everything like goes into like a perfect gradient, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to be kind of, you know, um, sometimes you have to be, you know, a little bit like picky with how you blend because not everywhere is going to be blended perfectly perfectly soft and sometimes when it comes with style um sometimes people like to blend a little bit rougher right i'm a rough blender i prefer to have my brush stroke showing when i blend my work together digitally um same traditionally um though i tend to break that rule <laughs> when i work traditionally so blending let me talk about blending usually blending kind of goes hand in hand with shading as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. Let's, let's talk a bit about cell shading. Now, cell shading or blending has no blending at all. Right, and it'll use blocks of color. Instead. Your Medibank tutorial helped me a lot. Thanks. For sure. Thank you for watching. Use blocks of color instead. No blending at all. It uses blocks of color and skin. So I'm going to use skin blobs. <laughs> no, let's turn that off for a second. Use skin blobs to kind of show these off. So if we have our skin blob here, right? We'll talk about how to pick shadows and colors and stuff like that in our lighting video, our lighting stream, which I believe is in a couple of weeks. I just planned these today. I need to remember. Um, and if we have a little bit of bounce light. Let's pretend the circle 
is good. <laughs> Maybe we have a little bounce light, and then there's some highlight, and then there's some subsurface scattering, which we will also talk about. Excuse me, what? Oh, I wasn't using that. There we go. That's why. It's all wonky. Give it a subsurface scattering. So, this is kind of celled in, right? So it's not blended at all, right? You kind of just leave it as a block of color, right? Totally valid. This is what I do 99% of the time, <laughs> right? Cell shading is kind of the one that most people do, right? When it comes to something a little more cartoony. Another kind of blending that you see a lot of sometimes. Let me actually make this a bit smaller. There isn't a lot that I want to actually talk about this time around, so you're going to be watching me draw for the majority of this. Um, and talking a bit about techniques while I draw a character. Cell shading. Rough blending. Rough blending actually tends to be... It, it's a little more stylized. I can never find a good brush. I try to make my own because I'm very, very picky, but Medibang's brush maker is very different than Photoshop's brush maker. So it's like, I tried to make my own brush before this, but like it didn't, didn't work out <laughs> quite so well. Cause like I have a, a Photoshop brush. I have like three Photoshop brushes that I blend with primarily, but like I can't use them here. So it's like, so I think I'm just gonna stick with my faithful G pen. <laughs> Not much, actually. I find the whole blending process relaxing. I do, too. I prefer lining, though. Rough blending. A little more stylized. Shows off brush texture. Not perfectly smooth. Hello, Suzami. Welcome in. Not perfectly smooth. So, our rough blending. So our cell bl shading or blending, no blending at all. Our rough blending is, you know, if I take my skin, my skin sphere once again. Yes, welcome to our regulars. I'm happy that you guys pop in, pop back in every once in a while, or like, like almost every stream. <laughs> I'm glad you're not completely sick of my voice yet. All right, so it's not perfectly smooth, it's a little bit more stylized. So I'm gonna turn on my opacity by pressure this time. Actually, I realize I missed a spot here, there we go. I'm gonna turn on my opacity by pressure this time. All right, I'm just gonna color pick the same shadows that are over here. Hi, hi, hi. Right, and this time, you know, I have opacity by pressure on. So depending on how hard or light that I press, it'll change the opacity, right? So if I press really lightly, the opacity is really light. If I press really hard, the opacity is really heavy. <laughs> Me pretending I'm a regular, even though I've only found about this a week ago. It's okay. Now you're a regular because you're here. You've been here twice. <laughs> You're one of our active Discord members as well, so consider yourself a regular. And you notice now I'm kind of picking the color and going back and forth between it. It's a good idea to have Alt as a pre-programmed button somewhere. Alt. So if you're on a keyboard, your Alt key will be... You know, the thing that... It shortcuts your eyedropper tool. Your eyedropper tool is what you want to be able to pick your colors back up. Right, 
right? So I'm kind of leaving my texture back in there. I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. All right, I'm kind of leaving my brush strokes in there. It gives it a bit more personality in my brain. Wait, you remember me? Of course I remember you. I'm on the Discord 99% of the time. I always have Discord open. Like, <laughs> I joined Discord, never active in it. That's okay. Just try to talk to people there. Yes. I will probably end up being the first person to reply, but it's just because I'm always on Discord and I like to reply to things. <laughs> And yes, I remember, like, almost everybody. Like, if your name is the same on Discord as it is on YouTube, I'll probably remember you. <laughs> okay. So you kind of see, right? I leave a lot of my brush strokes in there. A lot of my texture is remained in there. If I had a bunch of different brushes, I would be using them, right? Sometimes people like to add little extra lines. Sometimes they like to add extra shapes, stuff like that, right? So your rough blending is, tends to be a little more stylized, right? It makes it kind of feel like more of a rough painting, like an actual painting that you're in front of, right? A little bit different. And then you got the one that everybody tends to struggle with, and it's because it's the one that people think that they need to do, and it's not the one that they need to do. Right? In fact, I find this type of shading kind of boring. Don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> Rough blending. So this is soft blending. Super blended or soft blended blending. It's like, it's not bad to soft blend, I just kind of find it. I prefer rough blending. <laughs> it's a little bit easier, but also it's like, I think it has a little more personality. Um, so this is based a little bit more on realism. Right, so everything is very blended. Almost no strokes visible. So then most artists would end up using, you know, I'm going to switch to the pen real quick. I'm also going to turn up my correction just to draw the circle. My uh, skin, skin blob. And let's go down to the airbrush. Now this is where people would end up using the airbrush. Right, to get a very soft super blended look, right? Anything wrong with that? No, it's just I find it kind of boring. <laughs> For me personally, right? To each their own. All right, if you want to look like this, go for it. It ain't my art, it's yours. And a little bit of that bounce light down here too. It might be a little bit more concentrated though. Hello, hello, M. Welcome back. Glad to have you here. Normalize using airbrush. I'm not a fan of the airbrush. I'm using it just for <laughs> just for this portion. Like you can use the airbrush, but you got to use it wisely. Hi, hello. Right. So this is a super blended, soft blending kind of look. Right. It's based a little bit more on realism. Right? And everything with soft blending is very, very blended. And there's almost no strokes visible. Right? It's usually based in realism. Usually. How have you been? I've been alright. Hope you're doing well too. Nothing wrong with using airbrush. Yep, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. I just prefer not to use it. Right? Very blended, almost no strokes visible. Generally. in oh never mind I already wrote that <laughs> oopsie doopsie oh well where's Alyssa Alyssa doesn't really stream anymore it's the best for gradients I'll talk about gradients <laughs> and where to use them canvas stream this is 
stream number 14. Because I need to save this file, I forgot to. So again, the super blended kind of style is based a little bit more on realism. Now you can, you can use it, concept artists like to use these super blended ones when they need to make splash art. Um, rough blending tends to be for the actual concept art, so this is more for pre-production. This is me kind of rambling. And the super blended and soft blending is more for the splash art that comes afterwards, right? If you see kind of like League of Legends splash art or like any other MOBA or MMO kind of game. Um... Right, they all tend to have this kind of super blended, soft blending style. It's all very similar. Um, nothing wrong with it. It's quite beautiful. It's just that, you know, Miss Sarah, I hope she's well. I hope so, too. Um, I mean, I haven't talked to her in a little while, but hopefully she is. Um, but yeah. So let's talk about gradients, since Duder was so kind to bring it up. Right? Gradients. Generally, here's me bringing up rules. Generally, shouldn't use the gradient tool. as a blend tool, as a blender. I spelled blender wrong. B -E -E -B -L -E -N -D -E -R. As blender or to shade. It's been 14 weeks already, I know, right? Generally, you shouldn't use the gradient tool as a blender or to shade, right? So let me show you the difference. Right. If I were to grab this thing, make it a circle, ellipse thing, whatever. I were to take my gradient tool. Oh, I should have. Wait. There we go. Now, if I make my little circle here, right? I use the gradient tool. This looks a little flat, doesn't it? <laughs> Usually you don't want to do that, right? Crazy how time flies. I know, it's the worst. Tends to look a little flat. Right? And you have less control. That's the main one, right? If you use a gradient tool to shade in your work, you have a lot less control than if you were to use a brush, right? Because you're either stuck with the linear or you're stuck with the circular, right? And, or, you know, you have like other ones, but that's with like more advanced programs. <laughs> Many men, you're stuck with either linear or circular. And if you only use those, it can get very, very like non-controlled, right? Small correction, I meant using airbrushes good for creating gradients. Yes, that one is true. If you if you really want to create a gradient, then you could you just use the gradient tool, but you are limited to just two colors, which is very annoying. Um, but yes, if you wanted to add another color, airbrush, very nice. Um, but yes, gradients, generally you shouldn't use a gradient tool as a blender or to shade. Right, very, very general rule. It tends to look a little bit flat and you have less control. Right, we want a lot of control when it comes to our blending because, you know, blending all depends on material. I should write these down instead of just saying it. <laughs> How do I know? Do I know? How to blend. There are a couple of dependent factors, right? Material is one. And how much light is there is the other. I only use the gradient tool for sky backgrounds. Yeah, I mainly only use the gradient tool if I have backgrounds. Like, that I like really, really simple, or the sky, or something like that. 
or if I need to add like a vignette or whoopsie doopsie if I need to add a vignette or if I have like I want to add like aerial perspective those are going to come later <laughs> so don't worry about those um so how do I know how to blend? It depends on your material and your lighting. Lighting is what we're going to go over in another stream. So we're going to be mainly focusing on material. Material. All has to do with texture. Which is an element of art. Which is hilariously the only element of art that we don't have a video on yet. It's in the works. <laughs> it's coming. Um. But how do I know how to blend material? Texture, right? Texture. All textures will blend it differently. Right? And it's all about how the light kind of reacts with whatever it is, right? And that has to do with lighting. And we're not going to talk about lighting. We're just going to talk about different textures, right? If you look at a piece of fabric, obviously you're going to blend in everything on a piece of fabric differently than you blend stuff in on a piece of glass, right? A glass will have like very, very sharp, um, super reflective stuff. Yes, I need that material video. Yes, we'll go over texture. <laughs> texture's coming. Um, but all textures blend differently. Right, everything that, when it comes to textures blends a little bit differently. So, this means that we're going to do a whole new section. I'm sticking to this canvas. I refuse to make a new one. So, we're going to draw a full character. Now, this character, I'm going to try to put on as many textures as I can. Because I want to show how to blend a bunch of different textures. And that means that I'm going to use a character that you guys don't know. <laughs> but, you know, everything blends a little bit differently. So, let me just start by sketching in this character. So, this is not the part that we need to worry about just yet. I'm like, what pose do I do? Because I don't like just drawing people who are in, like... Just standing there, you know? Does that mean that I have to make this canvas larger? Yes, it does. Look at how long I always make these canvases. This is so big. Hey, what's up? Hello, Theo101. Welcome in. We're getting to the drawing portion. Because I need... Because we're going to demonstrate how to blend some different materials. And I'm going to demonstrate how I blend. Right? Because depending on the material, you're going to blend a little bit differently, right? Sometimes materials won't really blend just because of what the material is. Oh my god. Right? Glass and ref very reflective materials will not blend as much as fabric will. Or skin. Skin is translucent, though. I better see a masterpiece using these as usual. Alright. Alright, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> Part of me was wondering if I should, like, kind of plan, if I should, like, you know, draw the actual drawing before the stream started, because I was, like, the blending's probably gonna take me a while, but I'm assuming that you guys want to see the, the sketching process, too, so, like, that's why this is here, too. Oh, 
A great way to practice, you know, blending different materials is to do something called a material cube um, exercise. And that means just kind of making a bunch of cubes and drawing the textures for them. And I would do that, but I think that it's a little bit boring to watch. So we're drawing characters instead with like a bajillion textures on them. <laughs> draw noses so well thank you it's very easy i find like you know noses some people have like the anime nose right which is just like the little tick some people do like the realistic way which is like you know the three circles or whatever that you have like the nostrils and the stuff like that you know i use a diamond so if you have your diamond right this can be the end of the nose nostril you're done <laughs> it's a lot easier that way you could also have it like if the diamond is up front draw the two nostrils over here you're done Right? You could even have it from the bottom. Same deal. Right? Diamond. The diamond is superior. The di <laughs> it's all up to you, though, how you decide to draw your noses. I vary my noses, too, depending on the characters. She does, she does. Hello, Emma. Welcome in. I don't watch a lot of tutorials, and then when I do, it's like I hear what other people say, and I'm like, yo, that's so that's so genius. I, that's such a good idea, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, man, wish I thought of that sooner. It's like, whoa, who would have thought? Hello, weirdo mosquito. Yay, another epic Wing Canvas live stream. Welcome in. We did our little lesson about blending. How do I know how to blend and different types of blending, right? So just a quick recap. So the cell blending or cell shading, rough blending, super blended or soft blending, and gradients, which you should never, never use <laughs> because you just don't have as much control. It's nothing about style. It's literally just the fact that you don't have a lot of control over them. And they tend not to look great because they're a little bit flat, you know. Yes, welcome in to everyone who's popping in. I'm trying to draw a character who has a lot of textures. Fun fact, uh, the character that I'm drawing right now, their name is Tim, um, short for Timber. And this character I've had since I was 15. So <laughs> I still draw him to this day. So I have a lot of characters, guys. <laughs> like maybe too many, but it's okay. And the reason why I'm drawing this character is because, you know, he's got a lot of textures, right? It's because he's got, like, fur. He's also got, like, a scaly tail. He's got, like, you know, just as many textures that I can kind of throw in there, you know? Makes it a little bit easier to talk about blending. You never have too many characters. That's a fair point. Makes it easier to talk about blending when you have a character that has that's very material heavy, you know? should change the way this leg is because it's a little bit strange. I don't really like the way that the pose is. Probably I switch this. The more the merrier. Very true. Throughout high school, you know, I really liked doing anatomy. Anatomy is like one of my favorite things ever. And at one point, though, anatomy got very, very easy, and I was like, I'm gonna, I want to challenge myself, right? So what's the next thing that you could do with anatomy? Animal anatomy. So then, like, for all of high school, I spent it learning how to blend human and animal anatomy and finding the relationships between the two by drawing characters like this. And it was, like, very fun. <laughs> so if you want 
a good challenge, learn the relationship between human and animal anatomy because we're very, very similar, right? The more that you learn about it, the more similar we get. And we have a, we have a slew of live streams coming up about animals and we'll be talking about different kinds of anatomy that way as well. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I should have, oh, I see. I should have made it a little different, shouldn't I? Because it's a very long tail. So it's like, it's gonna have to like, I suck at anatomy. We have an anatomy live stream. We've got a live stream and like three videos about anatomy. So if you ever wanted to check those out. <laughs> Do that anime run kind of thing. Arms moving backwards. I can't even draw a stick figure properly. All right. I'm sure you can draw. Actually, I know you can draw more than a stick figure. And hey, man, we're all learning. I'm still learning. I learned a whole new lighting technique yesterday <laughs> that I tested. And I was like, yo, this is so much easier. Why didn't I do this? <laughs> right? <laughs> Though it was a Photoshop technique. So it's a little bit different. I can't really teach it on here quite as well. Um, but pretty nice, to be honest. Okay, I'm, I lied. Is that a mermaid? Nope. He's a Karen, if you actually want to know the animal. It's K... Oh my god. K-I-R-I-N. It's a mythological creature. He's a Karen. It's like a dragon unicorn thing. <laughs> Please don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, don't be hard on yourself. Listen, man. We're all learning. See Naruto running? Yeah, I, I was kind of doing that, and then I was like, I don't like that. It look, looks a little unnatural. Trying to figure out what to do with these arms because I could because I want them to it does make sense for them to go backwards but like it's like in what position you know could just kind of do that yeah that makes a little more sense I said carrot no <laughs> no <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. Poses usually take a couple of iterations, right? You kind of figure out what you're doing by messing up and then fixing it, and then messing up again and then fixing it again, right? It's rare that you get it good on the first try. Sometimes your best ideas and your best poses do come on the first try. It's <laughs> Ugh, sorry. Bless me. Sometimes I don't, though. Right, just try it over and over again. I believe the dragons are real. Heck yeah. Can he fly? Ah, uh, well, with magic, yeah. <laughs> it's this whole other universe. If I would, <laughs> I don't want to spend a whole day talking about these guys. <laughs> Listen, if we ever have a stream where you guys want me to talk about all my characters and writing, we'll do it. But that's not going to be today. <laughs> Because I am a writer. I've been writing stuff for years. But it's going to take a while. <laughs> it also gives you a look into my brain. And I don't know if I want that. Let's see. Thank you. Dragons are real. Heck yeah, they are. <laughs> that would really use me. Alright. Let's see how I can move this around. Because I want to crop in this. I want to crop this in. Um. <laughs> I'll just leave this at 6,000, I think. I could just do 5,500. Yeah, okay. There we go. Ugh, just so I can crop this in a little bit more, because it's too much space. <laughs> there we go. Can you breathe fire? No. 
Okay. That's kind of the first pass of the sketch. I'm actually not going to go too far past sketching this time. Because I want to show you guys how I blend. I'm going to change this layer to multiply as well. Um, and I'll show you why in a bit. Thanks for the link. Yes. We got our highlights anatomy stream. I'm just going to change the opacity a little bit because I don't want to use opacity by pressure just right now. Sometimes I wish it was a little bit less sharp on Minibang. Like, I like the sharpness, but also, like, sometimes it's a little too sharp and I'm like, kind of wish it wasn't so sharp. You know what I mean? Kind of wish it was a little bit rougher sometimes. <laughs> Okay. Sorry if I'm a little sniffly. I caught allergies today. Strangely though, not as bad as usual. I'm whenever I catch allergies, I'm usually dying. It's pretty good today though. So we're all alright. I think I missed this up. Yeah, I did. Uh, the joys. This is why you flip your canvas so you can check all the mistakes that you've made. If you know what I mean? No, no, no. That was right. I wanted to do that. It's just kind of check back and forth when you do that sort of stuff. I'm trying not to spend too long on this portion because this is not what we're here for. <laughs> Hello, Karina. Karina Wahyu. Novianti. I'm just going to stick with Karina. Hello. Welcome into the stream. I don't want to butcher anybody's names. I don't want to be too clean with this either because it's going to be gone. <laughs> I'm not keeping this anyway. But like I mentioned, I usually like very rough kind of blending. Fabric. I should, also men I should also mention that I'm a very geometric type of shader. Um, when it comes to my shading, I love geometry. That tends to be what I use the most. Which is like a very stylistic choice. Um, not very realistic at all, but it's fun. <laughs> Hello, Amara. Welcome in. Just 
kind of sketching because I want to get this done fast. I don't want to spend forever on it because this is really only here as a guideline for me. Oops, wrong layer. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I should like mute my mic whenever I sneeze. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you find out which outfits to give your characters? Depends. Um, I think of the time period, I think of the era, I think of where they are. Um, I think of culture, I think of religion, I think of their personality, <laughs> right? Stuff like that. And then I study fashion for a while. Um, I study fashion, quote unquote. Um, I look up different fashion that I, I think would suit them, right? Look up fashion from different countries, traditional stuff like that. Right, this is kind of his default. Actually, no, it's not, but it's one of the defaults that I have for him. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I would, I just research, like, I do a lot of research for outfits. And I mean a lot of research, like, I have, <laughs> I have folders, <laughs> folders of research. This should be curving upwards, not down. Right, so I've kind of got like fur, I've got fabric, different types of fabric. So there's satin in here. And satin is blended very differently because it's quite shiny. And I wanted that shiny <laughs> so I can show off on a shiny shade as well, right? Because there's like um, kind of more reptilian skin and there's more human skin and stuff like that. Chimkin like, chimkin like. They got hooves. He's got hooves. I could do chimkin legs. Chimkin legs, very, very thin. Small. Three in the front, one in the back. Bends backwards. Like most burb legs do. He do got very thin legs, though. I should have just one stroke this instead of... This is me refusing to use the, the correction. I don't want to spend too long on it. So I gotta get to the flats at some point too. Yeah, okay. That's about as basic as it'll go. Oh, I forgot to set their ear. LOL. <laughs> Again, I've had this character since I was like 15. His design has changed a lot over the years. <laughs> a lot of my characters have changed designs as time has worn on. So now that we've got this, I've said it's a multiply as well. Important. Let's just flat color and everything. Now, because this is a sketch, right, I can't do my normal trick of, you know, selecting the outside because a lot of it has open spaces, so I can't use that anymore. My line art looks so weird after I took out the sketching layer. How did you do that? Um, well, I constantly check back and forth, but this isn't line art. This is still sketch. Um, I'm not doing line art this time around. Um, but usually you want to check back and forth constantly um, because if you kind of stay on, whoops, if you stay on one layer... <coughs> and don't like, you know, try to amend anything, then you won't really know what it looks like without it while you work. So then you can kind of constantly check back and forth, fix stuff, stuff like that. Next week's stream is about line art though. You're right, I completely forgot. So I'll be going over line art some more next week. My favorite process, my favorite part of the process. I love line art. Line art's been my favorite thing for like ages. He's usually lighter than this. It's so hard to draw these characters without the <laughs> without my palette. <laughs> On Photoshop, I have like the fixed palette for every character. Ugh. Anyway, is it still opacity? No, it's not. Okay. 
But yes, thank you for the reminder, Dudu. Next week is line art. Week after that is lighting, I believe. Um, we still have yet to set up those ones because I didn't do that yet. Um, but yes, next week is line art. So we'll be going over my own line art process. So I'll be doing something kind of intense next week. And you guys will get to vote on this one this time. <laughs> I feel like a stalker. No, no, no. That just means you're keeping up with our channel. You're keeping up with it better than we are. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I say we because if you didn't know, we're a whole team of people. It's not just me. I just happen to be the sole streamer right now. Um, so the, I'm the voice that you hear the most. But there's a ton of us. So... It's not just me, don't worry. Yes, we appreciate all of our fans. We appreciate all of y'all regulars and those who aren't regulars. And thanks for popping in if you're not. Um, yes, we appreciate all of you. Thank you. So I'm kind of flat coloring absolutely everything in first. This is like the, the slow method of coloring. I could just like, you know what? Yeah, I am. Another way that you can do it is you can kind of color in around the edges of everything that you've drawn. And then you can take the paint bucket and fill it all in. Personally, I find it's actually just as fast to just color it in completely first. And then just fix up the edges. <laughs> oh my god. What is wrong with me today? I really am just like allergies. I spoke too soon. Animal and enemy stream? We got four. They're coming up. Yes, join our community on Discord if you'd like to chat with me some more. See my completely non professional texting style. <laughs> And if I ever have work that I'm, I feel okay to post in the Discord, then I will. <laughs> Please don't judge. I'm only 14. What exactly is line art? It's probably the official name of something super obvious. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, line art is your lines, right? So you, like, you know when you look at an art piece and sometimes there's an outline for the colors and whatever? That's your line art. Um, so like technically, even though this is still like my sketching portion... It's still just like a sketch because I didn't clean it up or anything. Um, this, th these dark outlines here are my line art. That's technically what line art is. Your line art kind of cuts out your colors for you. Don't worry. Terminology is not the important part. It's knowing how to do it. That's what, that's what's important. Do I love anatomy? Yes. Do I know any of the scientific names? Not really. <laughs> so don't don't worry about it. I know I know deltoids. Uh I know pectorals. <laughs> no worries. Uh what else do I know? I know <laughs> Uh <laughs> I know abs, abdomen, abdominal muscles. Um I don't know any of the bones. I know phalanges. Those are your fingers. I know patella. That's your knee. Uh. Oh my god. The femur. Spine. Rib cage. I don't know any of the scientific stuff, though. Don't worry about it. Termin TLDR terminology is not important. <laughs> it's the. It's knowing how to do it, that is. I don't know anatomy either. I say, like, middle part, top left, lol. Don't know anything. Yeah. I go, like, you know, like, the the arm. The upper part of the arm. Or, like, a, the, the tips of your fingers. Kind of the stomach area. <laughs> you know? But none of, like, the super scientific names. I don't know any of those. And then I Google it, and I'm like, I don't know any of these still. But. Okay, so I kind of got this. The reason why I set it to multiply as well. Why I set this layer to multiply is because if I didn't set it to multiply, then it would kind of stay as the same color throughout, right? Because this hair is very dark, right? I want it to be multiplied so that it kind of blends in a little bit better. I missed some spots. This is why the issue. Because I'm going to 
merge these layers soon. But you notice how the lines, my sketching lines, kind of change color when I put down a new color, right? It's because I've set that layer to multiply and it kind of automatically blends it in for me so I don't have to worry about it. All right, it makes my life a little bit easier. So you can still see where the sketched lines are. That makes everything feel a little bit more blended for now, because I am actually just going to blend it later. This is the problem with using dark colors, because it's like... Maybe I shouldn't have chosen this color character, because he uses a lot of dark colors, and dark colors aren't the greatest when it comes to blending. Do you color everything in one layer? Yep. <laughs> Too lazy to make more than one. My other coworkers, some of my other coworkers are like, you're crazy. And I'm like, I'm just, no, I'm not crazy. I'm just lazy. That's all it is. <laughs> These are just my flats as well, so even if they weren't on separate, if they were on separate layers, I would merge them at the end anyway. So it's like, I'm just, it's easier if I just do it all on one layer to begin with. You know what I mean? Okay, 452, so we're coming close to the half hour point, halfway point. It's not quite there yet, but all okay. This kind of leaves me with enough room. I may hmm, change the original palette because just to make it a little bit easier to blend, you know. Why don't you use Protect Alpha? It's what I'm using right now. I am using Protect Alpha. It's just that I've chosen... Well, at some points I had not using Protect Alpha just because, like, it's a little bit messy in some areas. So I have to fix it. But um, overall, Protect Alpha is what I use most of the time. It's just that some of the lines get kind of obvious if I don't have on Protect Alpha, you know? I draw on Clip Studio Paint. You can't draw the finished version of my art freehand. So I just use lines that are as, how do you draw perfectly freehand? Lots of experience, just a steady hand. Both! Jesse got a bot and would have been AWOL. I don't even know what it deleted. see that yeah no it's because um it's just on our end that we see it sorry i was just reading something um it's confused about it too yeah don't worry i don't know what's happening there um anyway yeah, so you can kind of see that it kind of makes the edges a little bit messy, so I turn off Protect Alpha just to fix it a little bit. Um, I don't need to do this, it's just my perfectionist brain kind of coming back in. Um, normally this would be black and gold, but like those colors are a little bit tricky to show blended, so I'm, gonna f I'm changing it just for this little portion. <laughs> yeah, timed out a few people, so <laughs> sorry y'all. <laughs>
Okay. Just popping in and out because I'm supposed to be working me. I'll give a full watch later. Do you have any tips or have already covered for layer management? Um, here's the thing. Layer management with me is I use a very, very small amount of layers. So 99% of the time, it's just naming the layers so I know which layers are which and just not using that many. Um, straight up, for things that are blended like this, I use three layers max. Three or four layers max. It's like I don't, I don't use a lot of them. Um... But the number one thing is not to name your layers a key smash. My brother does that a lot, and I know a lot of artists do that, but I promise you, actually naming your layers helps a lot <laughs> instead of just key smashing it. Like, I promise it helps if you actually name your layers. <laughs> yeah, and use folders as well. Like Dudu said, you could also use folders um, because those tend to be pretty helpful as well. I use layers for different sections as well, though it all depends on... Or I use, um, sorry, folders for things as well, especially if I'm drawing like a comic page, I use a folder depending on like if it's the the background line art or if it's the the foreground line art or if it's like you know stuff like that. Um, so it's really really helpful if you do that much as well. Okay, we're almost done here in terms of flat coloring. <laughs> Yeah, so this multiply layer kind of function is very helpful for those who really like colored line art because then no matter how dark your actual colors get, they won't get, you know, buried beneath other stuff, you know? Okay. So there are the flats, okay? So that's kind of what we got so far. But before we move on to the actual blending portion, we're going to have to lay out where our shadows are. Right? So let's do that real quick. Nope. Clip that. So I'm going to lay down my shadows real quick first. Right? SH, short for shadow. Change the blending mode to multiply. And I'm going to create some very simple shadows. Right? Just kind of around the areas. That's too dark. Kind of around the areas where I actually want shadows to show up, you know? Multiply layers work a little bit differently on the muddy bank, don't they? Yeah, they do. Oh boy, so be it, I suppose. Oh, we're not going to talk about lighting, how I place these shadows just yet, because those are actually going to be gone over in another stream, like I've mentioned. Um, so we're just going to talk about the blending portion, right? So how I would actually blend them in, right? Because I'm not just going to leave it cell shaded. I normally would just leave it cell shaded, but this time around we're not. Right, even still, if it was going to be left in let cell shaded, um, I would have fixed up the lines as well. <laughs> it's a little bit messy. It'll be up messy right now.
There we go. Just using SLC for the layers or previous streams. Some people key smash names for their layers. Anyone properly name their layers. This is a shorthand. So some people use like, you know, full words. I use a shorthand. So D stands for diagram. So this is diagram two. SH stands for shade, shading. C stands for color, you know, D diagram. T would normally stand for like thin line or whatever, or outline or whatever. Right, so I use a shorthand. It's a little bit different. <laughs> um, I think with key smashing is like, if it's a key smash, it means nothing, right? So you gotta have at least your color character area, line art character B, etc. Yeah, so for me, it's a shorthand, right? So then I always have like, so it might be like gray, like if it's like my character grays and then it's like gray T, right? Gray, thin line, gray, line art, stuff like that. Gotta go. Thanks for the epic live stream. Thanks, Weirdo Mosquito, for joining in. <laughs> Never a lull. Minor layer 21. No, don't do that. It's so bad for your layers. But thank you for joining, Weirdo Mosquito. Glad you could pop in. Hello, Gabriel. Welcome in. Welcome to the stream. Just kind of finishing up this section here. Bye and hi. Still in protect alpha. Oopsie doopsie. Okay, there's no color history, so or there probably is, but I haven't pulled it up. Let's just switch that back real quick. Okay. This is actually going the wrong way. These should be pointing this way. Uh, the joys. All right, so there are the flats, right? Flat colors, done. <laughs> That's basically it for the flat colors. But before we move on to the actual blending portion, let's talk a bit about us, right? If you are new here, I know there's a bunch of our regulars here, but if you are new here, um, if you did not know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are also an art school. So if you would like to check out all of the classes that we offer, I am one of the lovely teacher, teachers, whoever is behind the Wing Canvas channel right now, I believe it's Faye. Um, she is one of our lovely instructors as well, so be sure to check the link in the description for our website, which is where you can take a look at all of our classes. I teach mentorship, I teach cartoon and anime, um, so be sure to check out the classes that we offer there as well. And this file that you see in front of you, so this illustration along with the kind of tutorial that we did in the beginning, all the nuances and whatever, those you can find for and download on our Discord, which you can find the link in the description for. You can find our, um, sorry, you can get um, the JPEGs on there. So if you would like to check those out, feel free to do so. Um, join our Discord and I will be, you can chat with me and some of the other Wing Canvas um, members all on there and other fellow art nerds that you can find as well. But if you would like the file with all of my layers within it, so you'll be getting the JPEGs, not the layered files. If you would like those, then you are going to have to join our Patreon, which is where you can get all of my working files. You can download them, keep them free. It's all for you. Uh, well, not free. <laughs> it's on Patreon. Um, but we also have discounts for our classes on Patreon for certain tiers, which are in a limited amount of spots. So be sure to get those before they are gone. All right. Let's get back to the drawing portion now. So, we have this whole thing, right? Pass two over here, which is our whole layer with all of the, you know, oh, as I mess up the shadows here. Um, it's our all of our flats, right? All of the flat things that we have. But this isn't blended, right? It's just completely non-blended. This is very celled, right? Nothing wrong with that. But I want to show you guys how I would blend. So, what I would do is I take this, merge everything. <laughs> so I merge all of my layers together and this is what I paint on top of. So I have one layer that I use to paint on top of everything. Call me crazy. I am. But this is kind of how I would blend from this point out. I would also find my subsurface scattering color, which is probably this. Turn my opacity and pressure back on. 
And now what I've got to do is just press Alt and continue going back and forth between my colors. Now it's just going to be me blending everything in. All right, so me taking kind of the lines, blending everything in to work, right? Adding more darkness, adding more lightness, depending on where in the, in the thing I am. I also got to make the, the quick decision whether I want to keep my lines in or not. I think I'm going to just for the sake of this video um, or the stream. Sometimes I don't though. Um, sometimes I just choose to completely get rid of it. <laughs> But for skin, absolutely for skin, you really want to keep texture in, right? Skin is not perfectly smooth, no matter how much Instagram lies to you, right? Skin has texture, and you want to keep that in there, usually. Right, and blending is just hitting alt, going back and forth with whatever brush you decide to use. I use Clip, but I know Medibang is really good. I prefer Clip Studio, 100%. Like, <laughs> Medibang's pretty good. Um, for a free program, it's great. Um, but I much prefer Clip Studio. I, like, my primary digital program is um, Photoshop, but Clip is very, very nice. I use Clip for its extra functions. Like, for instance, I learned yesterday on Photoshop that I straight up don't have to blend in these, uh, these subsurface scattering things because it has a, you know, the glow function, which I never really use that much, but I learned that I could just automatically make these subsurface scattering things with the glow function. I'm like, bro, that's so big brain. <laughs> I was like, what? You mean to tell me I could have just turned on the layer function? I would have been like layer effects and I would have been good this whole time. It's what I get for not exploring my my things ever. <laughs> clip can animate many many is free. I don't use clip for animation. Like ever. Like ever. Just because I don't have like the new clip or I don't have like a I have legal clip but I don't have like clip EX. I just have like the main. You can use Krita for animating as well. Hello M Basil. Um Crit I find is just a very big learning curve. That's the difference. Is like Crit isn't very translatable when it comes to the new newer programs. Time lapse feature is really cool in Clip too. Yes, I use time lapse all the time. I love that thing. Mighty Bang's brother, Fire Alpaca, could be used for animating. Yes, Fire Alpaca is what a lot of my some of my students use as well. The thing with blending as well, when it comes to blending in your portions, is you get to choose how much you want things to be blended, right? So I like the smoothness, but I also try to keep some of my brush strokes in there. Add some blushing in there as well, because just the singular color is very, very flat. Right, we want to kind of blend more in there. So this is kind of me focusing on the skin portion for now. And again, just for this time, I'm keeping my my lines, line-ish bits in here. Generally, you don't have to. You can just completely delete them if you choose. Because Krita is what we use for our animation classes. 
um because we do have animation classes not taught by me but taught by lovely yuri who's sometimes in the chat but today she does not appear to be she must be busy um but yes i do not teach the animation it's yuri who does um i can't animate to save my life so <laughs> it's like in theory i can animate but in practice i can't animate at all so I stick to teaching cartooning classes. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there's Yuri. <laughs> when you're blending as well, zoom out because if you want to check. How it feels, right? It's the same with lines, it's the same with everything, right? Because you're probably going to end up working kind of zoomed in at this point, right? So you're going to want to zoom out. But make sure that you focus on big portions first before you get to the little bits, right? I kind of like to focus in on the big portions of the face first and then go to the little portions of the face. I work very linearly. So it's like if I'm working on the legs, then I'll focus on the big portions of the legs, then literal. And I'll do it all kind of in one go that way and it looks quite smooth when you zoom out it's when you zoom in that it's like kind of messy <laughs> Some things that are a little bit more shiny, right? The light is going to be concentrated on them, right? They're not going to be super, super blended in, right? If you have something that's more shiny, the light is going to be concentrated, right? If you have something that's not very shiny, the light is not going to be concentrated, right? It's going to be scattered. Again, a lighting thing, but lighting and blending kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> Uh, yes, I didn't save her well, so good thing that it kind of did that for me. <laughs> so I'm also, while I blend, I'm fixing up my values. Now there's some areas where I can tell that I probably need to bump up my values a little bit when I say bump up my values I mean like make it darker make it lighter stuff like that right and sometimes you know like usually I can kind of just you know you look at it you see where it goes right that's totally fine but most of the time sometimes we struggle with our values how dark or light something should be right a good way to check is if you just kind of completely zoom out if you can't really if there's some areas that kind of disappear you're gonna have to fix it but if it doesn't disappear then you're all good you can also check your values with a value layer. And a value layer is a color layer. It's a layer with the blending mode normal, completely over it. Or sorry, blending mode color over it. And then you color that entire layer in white. And that way, it'll give you an accurate way to check your values, an accurate value scale, right? And that's a, a very easy way to check whether your values are good or not. If things kind of blend together, then you're going to have to fix it. Sometimes people rely more on color for their value rather than like um if you <laughs> if you watch our 
value video. Um, sometimes people rely on color for value rather than value itself. Um, Claude Monet did that. So sometimes if you can see it perfectly fine when it's not. Oh my god, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes if you have the value layer and they look very similar, right, but you can see them perfectly fine when they're not on the value layer, then it's like, you know. Yeah, so my, my way of blending is very, very rudimentary. So I know that some people use like blur tools or blending tools or whatever. You Can you use those? Yes. Um, I just prefer not to. I kind of like the control that this gives me. You just roughly blend out everything first. Right, constantly clicking Alt to go back and forth between my colors. Right, and sometimes when you over blend, it can end up looking a little bit boring, right? When you over blend stuff, right, and you end up losing all of those brush strokes, right? Sometimes people like to have the brush strokes, sometimes people don't, right? It's all about preference, generally. You don't blend, yeah. Usually, I'm much more of a cell shader, but I do like digitally painting like this sometimes. If I have the time, I'll sit down to digitally paint. Yes, you're trying something similar that you saw in my class. Yes, Gabriel is one of my lovely students. Um, very new to coloring. Yeah, don't worry. Coloring is, color can be tricky. <laughs> coloring and lighting and all that. We got a lighting lesson coming up, so don't worry. We're getting to that. I think I got a couple of my students in here. I find Jesse's technique with everything on one layer really frightening. Yes, I can't, I can't use more than, like I can, it depends on how seriously I'm taking the piece. If it's just a character, I just, one layer, good enough for me. I hate having more than just one layer. It's like, or I hate having a lot of layers, so I gotta use very few amounts. Art fears what's hold you holds you back. Go in with guns ablazing and you're you're set, bro. <laughs> Experiment. Get wild. It feels too destructive, so I use lots of clipping layers. Yeah, I'm a very destructive painter. I'm not I don't try to make like things very easy for me to change because generally I find it easy to change regardless. It's like, I could use a clipping layer, but like, why would I, you know? <laughs> I suppose it's just because I never really work in teams of people, so it's like I'm completely fine with working very destructively on my own. And I kind of like the, the feeling that it gives of like very traditional painting. Because, you know, traditional painting, you don't have that layer option, <laughs> right? So this kind of helps with that in that sense as well. My brain would simply pass away if I used one layer. Ah, there's my other student. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's the... So this horn section here, right, the horn is very, very shiny. Right, so this shadow is going to be very, very concentrated. It might have some bounce light as well. So I'm actually going to take a bit of the skin color and bounce it on this as well because it will be affected because it's so shiny it will be affected by the colors that are surrounding it right this hair as well I might have a little bit there too
because it's so close to white, the the sh- the highlight won't really pop up, but that's okay. Could just change the colors just a smidge, just to make it a little bit easier to see. Since the highlight's going to be very very concentrated as well, because of how shiny it is. Right, so depending on material, material is very, very dependent on how things are shaded in, right? Now here's one of my old, my old kind of highlighting techniques that I don't really use anymore, but somehow I'm drawn to it this time around. Hair is another kind of shiny thing, right? There are so many ways to blend hair. I mean, so many ways, right? This is kind of one technique that I use sometimes where like the shadow clashes directly. The darkest part of the shadow clashes directly with the highlight. It makes everything feel very shiny. It's a very cartoony kind of way to shade hair, right? I don't do this often, but it's fun. <laughs> um, it kind of makes all the hair feel like it's in chunks. These values are very, very dark, so I may have to bump these a little bit just to make it a little bit more visible. It always feels like whenever I like teach one of these, it's like, yeah, you can do it this way, but really, there's any way you can do it, which is the truth for a lot of digital art, right? Digital art is so, so versatile. There's so much you can do with it. Everyone has a different technique, right? We learn off of each other, and it's like, there's really no right way, wrong way, anything like that, right? It's all just based off of personal preference. Sometimes there are easier ways to do stuff. but not always the best way. You know, there really isn't the best way. Does hair get bounce light too? Absolutely. Hair always gets bounce light. Um, everything technically gets bounce light, depending on how strong that bounce light is. Um, I might actually, I love using blue for my bounce light. <laughs> it depends on what the what um, light sources are around them, right? Blue is a very popular one though, just in general. Very caramelly. That's how I'm making this. Shiny. When I first did digital art, I did every single thing in a layer like I tried traditionally. Yep. So it's like, I guess I still hold on to a lot of those traditional <laughs> traditional drawing kind of regimens. Um, but yeah, when I, when I first did digital art, I didn't know what a layer was. So my very first digital drawing was only on one layer and on the background layer. Um, for those of you who use solely Medibang or stuff like that, um, on Photoshop and some other programs, your background layer is completely locked. So you can't do a lot of stuff on the background layer. Um, but yeah, I did it all on like the background layer, the single layer, and it was not excellent. Um, don't recommend it. Don't do that. <laughs> Not a good choice, you know what I mean? Hi, hello Nick Boy 67 welcome in to the stream. It's blending today, so you guys get to watch my blending process. <laughs> So 
see a lot of my blending is just going back and forth. You notice how I haven't moved away from the face yet. <laughs> I always like to just focus on one spot at a time. I'm very linear. It's kind of slow. It's a very slow method of painting, which is ironic because usually I'm very quick. I tend to like being very quick, but when it comes to my blending, very, very slow. I'm a very slow blender. The antlers are another thing that are probably going to be very shiny. Yeah, I'm pretty much done with the hair. I have a couple places that I might fix, but overall, it's generally quite done. I'll add on my bounce light afterwards, because isn't too, too much that I want to do. So the antlers are going to be another section that's going to be quite shiny, right? So the shadows and everything like that are going to be very, very concentrated, right? It's also round, right? These antlers are probably going to be quite round, so I need to make sure that the shadows are quite rounded as well. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm kind of keeping my lines in there, so I'm just going to have to draw them back in a little bit. Of course, my highlight's still very, very shiny and bright. It's kind of reflective. It looks like polished light. <laughs> the way that I've kind of done it. Not quite what I was going for, but good enough, you know. Sometimes good enough is better than perfect, you know. Sometimes you gotta let go. You know what I'm saying? Spend too long on one section, you're gonna like end up never moving away from it. It's the designer's motto. Good enough is better than perfect, sometimes. Because perfect isn't what's going to make your deadline, you know? So a lot of the things that I'm doing have to do with lighting, and that's why I'm not really talking about a lot of it, because if I talk about it all here, then we won't have anything to talk about during the lighting stream. <laughs> so a lot of my decisions for where I put these shadows have to do with lighting. And lighting is something that, you know, it takes a lot of observation from the real world. And practice, of course. And I think I want to try something different for the lighting streams. I kind of have an idea, but I want to do something a little bit different for the lighting stream <laughs> that I'm going to test on my students. Um, but we'll see how it goes and how I feel that day. Okay, now we can finally move away from the face. Now, <laughs> the face has a lot of very shiny things, right? Um, with this character in particular, right? We got the horns, we have the the eyes, right? Tongue, tip of the nose, right? Your nose tends to be a little bit shinier. Actually, I want to fix that. Um, tip of your nose tends to be a little bit shinier, right? Certain areas of the face that are a little bit brighter. 
right? This has to do with like more facial anatomy. So it's a little bit different than what we're talking about because we're doing blending. Right, but now we're gonna go down into fabric. Now fabric is one of those things. What happened here? Hello? Um, fabric is one of those things where like your lighting is gonna be very, very scattered. And that means that there isn't going to be a lot of, there's gonna be blending, but there isn't gonna be a lot of highlights. So most of what you're gonna see is just blending with fabric and a lot of texture. So I'm really going to not blend in a lot of this portion. Because fabric, textiles, everything like that, has a lot of texture. So I'm really only gonna blend where I think it's a little bit more necessary. But fabric is one of those things where you can really leave it kind of rough. And it looks quite good. Okay. Alright, so I'm leaving this all in really big strokes. These big, strong strokes. Oh, right. This part is satin. Satin, however, is a shiny fabric. So that means that I do have to blend this one. Or I don't have to blend it, but I have to blend it a little bit differently. It's going to have highlights. And strong highlights at that. Because it's a shiny textile. because it's rounded, I'm gonna choose the areas where I want, why does this keep happening? I'm gonna choose the areas where I want the most shadow to kind of be. This is gonna have some bounce light from, this, from the fabric below. And this is gonna be a very, very concentrated highlight here. Right? Shiny. Very, very shiny. So our blending is going to be cut to a kind of minimum. Right? So shinier things. This actually should be looped up a little bit more. This should be marked here, I think. Something like that. Every single technique that you see me use, right? It's what use. It's what works the best for me, right? Not every single technique that I use will be the best for you, right? Everybody has a style. Everybody has a technique that they prefer to use, right? Because sometimes it works better for one person and works worse for another. It all depends on how you prefer to illustrate. Of course, there are like certain principles, like um like colors and whatever that you shouldn't really go against um like color theory and whatever well not really go against but like there are certain rules to those that are like kind of set in stone but in terms of techniques right there's a lot of freedom for what you decide to do So I'm just kind of bumping up some values, changing around how certain things are. You notice how quick 
how slowly I did the face and now I'm moving a little bit faster with the fabric and that's because I don't want to spend that long on the fabric. I don't like to color my drawings because it feels like it ruins the general aesthetic. At least it's what I think. I'm a very black and white artist as well. Generally, I like to work in black and white, but I mean, I, I force myself to color <laughs> just to get better at it. Um, you don't have to color. That's the thing. It's like not a, a lot of people think like they have to color their work. Typically, you don't have to. Um, is it good to know how to color? Yes, but you don't have to really. Like you can just focus to keep all your works very, very black and white. Right? That's all up to stylistic choice. But if you were to learn, then you know there are some set rules and whatever um, that you don't always have to follow. But, you know, they're, they're like suggestions. <laughs> um, but if you have like a certain look that you're going for and it doesn't involve color, then stick with it. You know, I just think that a, that a bad excuse for not learning how to color is that I'm not good at it. Right, that's kind of like a, a rough excuse for not <laughs> for not practicing anything, right? It's because I'm not good at it. That's why you practice, my friend. But if you have a certain style that you're going for and it just doesn't involve color, totally fine. Same with lines. If you have like an aesthetic, some people like to work completely lineless. And that's totally fine. You know, some people just don't like working with lines. It's like, I think you're cowards. I'm kidding. That's a joke. Because <laughs> I'm a very big line art person. But. Would you recommend... Doing lots of smaller things or one big complex thing for learning color? Mix of both. Right? Smaller things are kind of, you know, little individual sections that you can do, right? Um, but one big thing is how you actually put it into practice, right? If you constantly do little things all the time, then, you know, you'll never know how to put it into practice. If you only do really big things, then you might be skipping steps, right? So you kind of got to do a bit of both, right? My lessons are the many things. <laughs> My lessons are the small things. The big things are the actual art pieces that you do. Like the finished, completely polished sorts of stuff that you do, you know? Just as Yuri said, practice does make perfect, right? I know a lot of young artists hate to hear it, but sometimes you just gotta practice. I know some, I've had some friends who are like, I hate being told to practice. I'm like, sorry, buddy, that's just kind of how you get better. So I hate to break it to you. <laughs> Make sure you're giving yourself challenges. Make sure you're pushing yourself, right? What time is it? Oh, 5.39. Not too bad, actually. We're doing good time. Taking good time. I actually like the way this is turning out. <laughs> it's kind of a... It's kind of an older style of blending, you know? Kind of an old 2009 DS game kind of feel to it, I guess. That's what I get off of this, anyway. Super nice, Jesse. Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> oh, 
off the post. Thank you. Took me a couple tries to get it. <laughs> You know that I start to get kind of into a into a piece if I stop talking. <laughs> it's like if I if I'm kind of quiet, it's because I'm starting to get really into whatever it is that I'm drawing. Um, yeah, this section especially. Um, the thing with like working with blacks or really really dark colors is that your highlights on them are going to be very very scarce unless if they're shiny, right? It gets a little bit tricky to work with them, dark colors. Which is why I changed the color of this entire outfit, because normally he doesn't wear this color. Alright, but I'm like, just for the sake of this live stream, I gotta change it. Hi. Hello, Amara. Hello again. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Yuri is our lovely animation instructor. Um, animation and digital art. So if you're ever thinking of taking those, that's Yuri. I'm going to have to bump up these values. It's a little bit wrong here. Or it's a little bit hard to see here. Let's separate them a little bit. Yeah. Let's start to add some of that bounce in that I said I wanted to add in, but didn't. How do you find the pose for a character instead of making them stand up? That's called a dynamic pose. Um, we have a video about that that lovely Alyssa made a while ago. It should be on our channel. Um, but dynamic poses generally, when you choose a pose, think about the character's, you know, personality. Think about what you're kind of go for, right? Because when they're just kind of standing there, it can get a little bit boring. Right? So when you're thinking of your dynamic poses, you're thinking of... all those combination of things. And yes, you can also look up pose references. <laughs> pose references are your best friend. References, period, are your best friend. Always, always, always use references. If you don't know what the heck you're doing. It is not cheating to use a reference. I use references on the daily. What was my most recent reference that I looked up? I think it was a duck. I think I looked up how to draw a duck. <laughs> but yes, pose references are a great start. Actually, there wouldn't really be much here. The light is... There's actually a shadow here. There shouldn't be any light hitting this. LOL. It should be very dark here. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit better. And then there would be a little bit more light happening over on the outside here. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit better. I think yours is a bike. You know what? That's so valid. I don't know how to draw a bike. I'm so bad at them. I always have to look up bikes. Bikes, cars, vehicles. Everybody on stream who has been here before knows my absolute hatred for drawing vehicles. And I don't hate drawing a lot of things. <laughs> I'm very open for a lot of things. It's vehicles that I cannot stand. But I'm quite open for almost, literally almost anything else. So... <laughs> My artistic enjoyment comes from the challenge it brings. <laughs> Bikes are so hard to draw. They're the worst. They're the worst. I remember for a school assignment, we had to draw a vehicle of some kind. And I looked at my professor and I was like, you're not making me draw this, are you? <laughs> I didn't say that to him. But 
in my brain, I was like, I'm not drawing a vehicle. So to get out of it, um, I drew a... I made a vehicle, but I made it out of, like, trees and bark and, like, stuff like that, right? It was supposed to be a concept art thing. And I got, like, 100 on it. Because <laughs> he's like, oh, it's such good design. And I'm like, it's just me being too lazy to learn how to draw a motorcycle. <laughs> you know? Thanks, man. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Yes, bicycles? Awful. They are surprisingly hard, yeah. It's like, you wouldn't think that a bicycle is that hard to draw, and then you actually try it with a reference, and you're like, oh, never mind, looks like I'll, I'll guess I'll die. <laughs> That's just... That's how it goes. Five forty six. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, it really does resonate like a, an old DS game. <laughs> I kind of vibe with it. The style that I'm going for. It kind of reminds you. You know what it kind of reminds you of? Yoshi's Island for the Nintendo DS. <laughs> the game that I never finished and I really want to but I can't find my old cartridge so I may just have to buy it again and then start from the beginning <laughs> after the stream ends I'm going to try, try drawing a bike, go for it I won't have to draw a bike for a very long time if ever again so <laughs> I am safe for now I was like, okay, wheels, and I need a reference. Yeah, me. <laughs> Star Wars Day, all the references I used, I was crying on the inside. Like, there's so much to do. <laughs> so difficult. I was like, I can't. My dad was like, the X-Wings look good. I'm like, bro, I can't draw this. What is this? <laughs> Yes, challenge yourself. The joys of art come from the challenges they bring. That's that's me anyway. If you start to find that art feels a little bit too easy, then you're bringing yourself into a rut. The best way to challenge yourself, the best way to get out of an art rut is to challenge yourself. That's how I always do it. Whenever I need to like kind of challenge myself. Whenever I feel like I'm in a rut, my style changes drastically just for that day. <laughs> just to like give myself a challenge. You know what I mean? Oh, the spaceships. My pain. My pain. You can probably feel it through the screen. That's me dying. <laughs> well, I try to draw spaceships. As much as I love sci-fi, I'm so bad at drawing the genre. My brother and my dad are very big sci-fi people. So, like, they'll my brother loves to draw robots. My dad loves to draw robots and superheroes and stuff. And then me, on the other hand, I'll draw, I'll draw a dragon for you. <laughs> I'm much more the fantasy type. You notice me zooming in back and forth constantly as I try to check my... My values, this needs to be darker over here because it is folding downwards a little bit as the light slowly stops hitting it very gently. Yeah. Okay. I realize I completely skipped over the hands. I should probably do these. The fun thing with hands, um, a lot of my blending techniques and a lot of where I know or where I decide to blend with stuff, all of my techniques come from doll artists. And the reason why is because doll artists know everything. I've said this before in a past stream, but if you ever want to see an artist who's experienced in almost everything, watch doll artists do their magic. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like it's like they're costume artists, they're concept artists, they're super good with anatomy they're great they're sculptors they're everything great painters it's like if you want to see somebody who's experienced you watch a doll artist do their work absolutely insane i don't have the patience for doll art but i appreciate it so much uh but one technique that i picked up illustratively 
from doll artist is body blushing and body blushing is when you kind of add extra blush or redness to certain areas of the body and that gives it a bit more of a lifelike feel super nice great choice of the colors thank you yuri Right, so the tips of your fingers, you add a little bit of blush to them. Your joints, tip of the nose, shoulders, knees. That should be a Discord challenge. Only bicycles and spaceships allowed. I will be suspiciously absent that day <laughs> if that appears. Oh, I had a dream last night that I went to Australia. Sorry, I'm just bringing that up randomly because I just remembered it. And I forgot to write it down. I always write down my dreams, if you're wondering. Dreams are a great source of inspiration. If you ever wanted to get inspired, record your dreams. I mean that. <laughs> you will never get creativity as pure and as raw as whatever the subconscious comes up with. Your dreams are the pinnacle of creativity. Keep them, store them, use them as inspiration. <laughs> Don't give them ideas. Any doll artist recommendations? I love Delightful. I watch her a lot um, because she was a video game artist very, very briefly. So her work is very... Um, what's it called? is very grounded in concept art. So it's like, it's very, very good. Um, I love watching her tutorials. There's another artist that I really, really love. I keep forgetting her name. Uh, I think it's Maria Lazar is her name. I love her work too. She's a very good painter, very good hairstylist as well. Her design is always very, very like nice and beautiful as well. Hi, thanks for joining Amara. Yeah, lots of doll artists. One of my favorites was um, Delightful's uh, Dragon series, and she did a whole series of dolls that were based on dragons. Super, super cool. I loved watching that. Those designs were so fun. Watching her concept work, too. Super cool. <laughs> I died last night in my dreams. Kind of a regular thing. Yeah, I get chased a lot in my dreams. Don't worry about it. Happens a lot. But my dreams are always very, very vivid. So, like, I always try to record them or send them to my best friend or something. So I'm like, wait, 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 let me reference back to this later. <laughs> I remember once I had a whole dream about, like, these this pair of boys and they had to go and exercise, like, a demon from their schoolyard. And it became, like, this whole story. It was like I was watching a movie. And then I woke up right before, like, they went to go fight the demon. I was so mad. I was like, yo, my dream just, like, cut me off, dude. I was like, what? Bruh, I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, don't put me back, please. Please, I want to watch the ending. <laughs> there was that one. I had a dream about a man who couldn't die. And it was like his whole life was like him trying to figure out how to like live with it. Live with his reality. Really good dreams, guys. <laughs> we already have the ideas. Listen, I'm, listen. My rule in my classes, if you ever decide to take one of my classes, is if I don't have to do something, you don't either. <laughs> so if I don't have to draw a car, you don't have to draw a car. <laughs> delightful? Yes, I love Delightful. I've been watching her for years. I love her stuff. So cool. Cliffhanger, jeez, I know, I was so mad. I was so mad. So I ended up writing it for myself in the morning. I was like, you know what, dreams, you're not going to finish it. I'm going to finish the story. <laughs> but yes, dreams, you ever wanted, like, inspiration? Your dreams are where you go. Trust me. It's even better if you have super vivid dreams like me. Oh, it's five minutes till six. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll just finish this. <laughs> I 
I'm in a bit of a roll right now. I'm kind of vibing with this. You know what I mean? If you ever have lines, like if you're just doing line art, right, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to color your line art, right? Because sometimes just black line art can look very, very flat, right? Of course, only do it if you have the time, right? Because it takes a long time. But if you have the time, color your line art. It makes things look a lot better, a lot nicer. Really pushes your values up, you know what I mean? Oh, yes, and if you're part of the Discord and you're drawing along, feel free to share your stuff, man. I love looking at other people's artwork. It's gotten to the point as well, by the way. Like, I love I love seeing art on my... Like, I'm on Twitter, right? My One of my favorite things to see on Twitter is just, like, other people's artwork. It's gotten to the point where I get far more excited about people's original characters compared to fan art. Like, <laughs> fan art's great, but I, I want to hear about your OCs, man. I, wave, I love listening to people talk about their writing and who their characters are and everything. <laughs> I came very late. Hello, Gabrielle, our foxman. Welcome in. And yeah, you're a little bit late, but don't worry. I'm still, uh, I'm still painting. I'm trucking along. Forgot some highlights here. Let's add those back in. So we'll be here for a little bit, a little bit longer. And yes, better late than never. <laughs> I just discovered the stream and I'm loving it. I'll be joining future lives. Yay! Thanks for enjoying. Thanks for popping in. I'm glad you enjoy. Every week, uh, every week, uh, every week on Fridays. That's right. That's my schedule. <laughs> every week on Fridays. 4 p.m. Eastern time. At some points, I'm like, I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, so fur, fabric, everything kind of within that realm tends to be a little bit shinier, depending on what kind of fur fabric it is, right? Sometimes very concentrated fur, right? Because some hair reacts a little bit differently than other hair, right? Very tight coils tend to scatter light a lot more than very shiny, sleek fur. Or sleek hair. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so sorry. Blah. I have a different illustration I have to finish tonight, too. Oh boy. Bliss. Thanks, Yuri. <laughs> Bliss. Okay. 
There's a little bit of shadow down here. Mostly though, it is quite shiny, so I have to draw it the way that you would shade hair as well. So kind of adding in my shadows. But it's only a very small tuft of hair, so I don't want to focus on it too, too much. So we want to give it a bit more values, though. A bit darker here. The hooves are generally okay. I mean, I could just, like darken this a little bit. Why does this always happen? So it's just like a little dot that gets drawn. Just have to fix up the shape a little bit. <laughs> Hope you can make this into a print. Could you imagine? I mean, I probably won't, but... <laughs> Maybe I'll just print it up for myself. <laughs> Super cute, though. This whole set of OCs, like, from this universe, like, I haven't really made public. Just because they're kind of old. But I really want to use them again, because I spent five years of my life writing them. So I better use them at some point. One of my favorite things to do is write. Like, I love writing about characters and backgrounds and stuff like that, you know? Like, all, all about, like, characters and stuff. Coming up with plots really, really fast is, like, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> giveaway! Giveaway! <laughs> hey, guys! Welcome back to this channel. Today we're doing a milestone giveaway. <laughs> Click the lick. Hit that like button to be entered into the giveaway. Leave a comment. Saying how epic you are. <laughs> Whoever draws the best bike wins. Gets this as a print. Kind of funny. Discord server is really cool. Epic. Thanks for joining. The bike with the most wheels. Oh my god. I mean, there are like, there are like tandem bikes, right? And those have more than two wheels. You know what I mean? Like... Let's shade in this tail first, because... Probably do this pretty fast. Well, not extremely fast, but fast enough, you know. Okay, yeah, this always pops up. Like, why? <laughs> I'll draw the bike with trainer wheels like a tricycle. <laughs> Oh, I saw the cutest tricycle yesterday. And like the but it was on a leash. Like the parent had it on a leash. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, no. <laughs> I was gonna show how to blend like this kind of tail, but like I'm kind of blending it the same way that I would skim, so not too much different.
But I guess now you guys, because like, you know, for most streams, like I said, I optimize a lot to kind of be faster. Now you guys have seen what my actual, <laughs> my actual painting process is. <laughs> very linear, very slow <laughs> kind of process for painting. This is my actual non-optimized way that I digitally paint. Good things take time, very true. Speed is great, but sometimes you gotta take extra time if you wanna make it look great and better, you know? Just adding on a little bit of texture here. There's no real stippling brush for this program, so I have to do it manually. <laughs> that gives it a little bit of extra texture. It gives you a bit of an idea of how This tail feels quite a little bit bumpier. Just a smidge rougher. Wait. Oh no. <laughs> You know that feeling when, like, you, you need to sneeze and then your body tells you no and you just don't? I was trying to mute my mic to see if, like, I could get it and then, like, it just, my body just went, nah, you're not gonna sneeze today. Ugh. And my whole face feels weird. Gross. I've been experimenting with different ways of painting and discovered that drawing line art and color on the same layer is really fun. I get the inspiration from an Italian artist. Ah. Yeah, some people like to do their color and then their line art, so they do it a little bit backwards. I have never been that type of person. <laughs> I tried it once, and I did, the, the style didn't really work for me, but it ends up beautifully when pe other people do it. So I'm glad you've been experimenting. It's great to experiment. One painting style, a traditional painting style that I've picked up from impressionists is to use like very thin, small brush strokes and impasto. And those are two of my favorite things to do when I paint, like traditionally. <laughs> I don't do it often, but when I do impressionists, that's how I paint. The impressionists got it right, man. <laughs> but with afraid and respect you, Gabriel. Very epic. Yes, and do tell the artist, share with the class. Synesthesia fear. I've never heard of them before. I will perhaps take a peek after this stream. Hmm. 
Mekaime. She's great. So I have an artist I've been following recently. I have tons of artists that I constantly get inspiration from. My favorite painter, my favorite digital painter of all time is Nadia Kim. And Kim Illustrate on Twitter. The amount of work that I have by her is crazy. <laughs> um, I love Nadia Kim. I really love Musagi, who's a horror artist. So if you're not into spooky stuff, don't find her. But she's a body horror artist. Love her work as well. Musagi. Um, Trevor Henderson, another horror artist that I really love. <laughs> Again, spooky. Um, Velinxi, who's not a horror artist, but I've been following her work for ages. You may very popular. But again, what I've been following since I was like 14. I've got lots of artists that I love. It's like, it, 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 the list never ends. It's <laughs> a cool name, yeah. I got tons of artists that I love. If you ever want my artist list, ask me. <laughs> And I will give you everyone who inspires me. All right, we're almost done here. <laughs> Six twelve. We're almost done here. Twelve minutes over time. Just the end of this tail tuft. Carlos de Mau. Yes. I love that artist. I believe I follow him on Instagram. If I remember correctly. Hang on, now I have to look him up because... Yes, I do know this artist. I love that artist. He's fantastic. I love his backgrounds. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I didn't know he had a back. I didn't know he had a comic though. So, we'll be reading that. We'll be yeah, comic artists inspire me to no end. I love comic artists. There's one comic that I read called Spira. It's on to pay sick or to pass um and what's cool about it is it's one writer but it's every like almost every chapter is done by a different artist so there's no two artists that are the same so everybody interprets the characters a little bit differently and everybody interprets how the panels are going to be done a little bit differently all the colors are different it's really really cool so if you've ever wanted a really really cool comic to read spira it's on to pass T-A-P-A-S. Super, super cool stuff. I love reading that one. Yes, and welcome to everyone who is popping into the Discord for the first time. Thanks for joining us. The little art nerd community, because we gotta stick together. Alright, almost done. <laughs> I keep telling myself that we're almost done. <laughs> I do tend to work a little bit faster when I have an audience, though, funny enough. It's the pressure. <laughs> I 
looks so good. Thanks, JC. JC is one of our lovely video editors. If you've seen any video on this channel, it was probably edited by JC. <laughs> What kind of genders do you like the most in comics or books? As in, like, the characters? That doesn't matter to me. Um, in terms of illustration, though, I tend to draw boys more. <laughs> I tend to be more of a male artist. Um, like, I tend to draw male characters more often. Um, but in terms of, like, books and writing, I don't care. I care more about how the character is. <laughs> Personality is what matters to me. Because you can have, like, a beautiful character, and they can be the most boringly written thing in the world right i care very much about how a character is written that's what i care about so i don't care much about the genders i care more about whether you're interesting or not <laughs> if you're boring i i automatically just stop reading the comic like it's like which sounds kind of shallow but you know sometimes you know like writing is very important i find that you know Like, I like interesting three-dimensional characters. Of course, I have tropes that I like as well, but, like, you know. <laughs> Overall, gender don't matter to me. Oh, I forgot the nails. LOL. Let's do that real quick. Oh, genres. <laughs> Story genres. I love horror. I love fantasy. I love action. I love drama. <laughs> Those tend to be my favorites. Um, Oh, and romance, which I don't really say much about. But romance, I'm very, very picky about. I prefer drama over romance. Um, did I forget anything? Double checking. I mean, I could add a multiply there, but I don't feel like it. All right. Yeah, genre. Genre, that's G-E-N-R-E. -E, genre. <laughs> And yes, JC's the one who makes our lovely live stream highlight videos. So you know how these live streams are really long and then you get a live stream highlight that's really short. Say thank you to JC because JC does all that. <laughs> um, but there we go. That's it. That's the that's the full render. Look at that. You start it's fun to kind of look back and forth. This is the final. That's what we started with. Right? Kinda cool to see back and forth, you know? The difference between the two. Oh, the tail bulked up. That's kind of funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so, so much for joining this stream. Um, like I mentioned, um, kind of midway through and at the beginning, if you're kind of new here, and if you don't know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are also an art school. I am one of the teachers there. Um, Yuri, who popped up a lot, is the one of the instructors as well. Cosmic, I love cosmic horror. Cosmic horror is so good. Um... <laughs> Cosmic horror is one of my favorites, 100%. Um, I love ocean-related horror, too. Um, but yes, we're also in art school. Check out the link in the description to check out our classes that we offer. Um, and if you didn't know, this file, along with um, you know this little tutorial that we did in the beginning, both of those will be available as JPEGs on our Discord, which you can download all yours. You can keep them, save them, do whatever you want with them. Just don't repost them. <laughs> um, but they're all yours to reference off of. Um, unfortunately, though, you don't get access to my layers. If you would like those, you're going to have to join our Patreon. Our Patreon is where you can get bi-weekly um, updates um, for behind-the-scenes stuff, and also you get bi-weekly working files from me. Um, so those are all yours on Patreon if you sign up there. We also have limited time discounts on our classes over there that are available um, for a limited time only. So if you would like to grab one of those spots, make sure that you get them before they are gone. But thank you so much to everyone who has popped in. Um, next week, we are going to be focusing on line art. So this week was all about blending. Next week is line art. Um, my favorite thing ever. <laughs> you guys will get to vote on what we are lining next week. Um, it'll probably be a character again. <laughs> because we've been doing a lot of backgrounds, so it'll probably be better if we do some characters coming up. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for joining, guys. Um, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye!